and Terry Moore in 14 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine the indecision and torment of a boy perched on the high ledge of a building as he make up, makes up his mind whether or not to jump? No, you probably can't. But you can understand the concern of a policeman who tries to save him and the agony of his fiancé as they spend a terrifying 14 hours. And as the stars of this hot and moving drama from 20th Century Fox, we have that forceful actor, Paul Douglas, in his original role, and Kerry Moore as a lovely and devoted sweetheart. Now, 14 hours, starring Paul Douglas as Dunnigan and Kerry Moore as the genius. <laughs> started at 10 minutes to 9 on the morning of St. Patrick's Day on a busy street in New York City. It started with a woman's sudden scream. What's the matter, lady? You see a flying saucer or something? Look, look, the whole car window. That man, he's going to jump from the window. He's going to jump. Holy fuck. Oh, do something. The policeman. Get the police. Hey, hey, hold it back. Hold it back. Come on. Hold it back. The crowd started to gather, most of them not quite sure just what the excitement was all about. So what is it? Somebody advertising something, maybe? You got me, lady. Could be. Crazy, crazy people. Anything to attract the change. By now, the policeman had rushed to a call box to report to his precinct. This is Dunnigan. Dunnigan, traffic eight. There's a jumper on the ledge at the Hotel Rodney. A man, yes. Yeah. The 15th to 16th floor. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. 15th floor of the Hotel Rodney. Room 1505, the manager's at the window pleading frantically with a young man who's standing on the narrow ledge. You come in from there. You want to kill yourself? Get in or I'll call the police. If the police come near me, I'll jump. Where is he? Where is he? Out to... He's on the ledge now. Be careful. He said he's jumping. He's he can't look at him. Look at me. Give me a tie. Give me a tie. Look, I'll take my coat off. You see, take off my jacket, put your tie on, and maybe he won't think I'm a cop now. Now, who is he? I don't know. We're checking the guest registrations now. Well, there'll be an emergency squad here any minute. Get word down to the lobby and stand back. Let's see what I can do. Hello? Hello, this is Mr. Regan. Oh, it's a pretty dangerous thing you're doing out there, kid. You, you might fall off and hurt somebody. Down there. What are they watching me for? Well, you know how people are. Somebody starts to look, and before you know it, there's a whole crowd. Well, if you're wondering about me, well, I... You uh, come any closer, and I'll jump. Who's coming closer? This ledge here. Too narrow for me, kid. But, but if you stay out there much longer, the joint's going to be creeping with cops. You hear those sirens? I hear them. Well, they may be just a little bit sore about this happening on St. Patrick's Day. It's a big day for the cops. They got their buttons polished, and they... Hey, look, I got an idea. I could sneak you down the hall into my room before they get here. We could, you know, order up a slow breakfast. Who's then... in the room? Who's in there with you? Uh, just a couple of guys from the hotel, that's all. Anyone comes near me? I'll jump. They won't bother you, kid. Stay right there, huh? Stay there. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. Who are you? Dunnigan, sir. Traffic A. Who's this guy? I'm Mr. Regan, the manager. What are those doors? Connecting doors to adjoining rooms. Okay, get some keys and open them up. If the rooms are occupied, tell the people to get out. You, Sergeant. Yes, sir? Get up to the roof. There are two more stories. See if we can drop a loop on them from up there. Just a minute. Who's Deputy Chief Muxer? I am. Telephone. Okay. You, Donegan, get away from that window. Hello? That's right, and I'll have them off that ledge in a few minutes. What? No, 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 no. I don't want any brain specialists. Okay, send them around. Make them happy. I told you to keep away from that window. Well, I will, sir, and I promise him. I... Hey, kids, look, kids. I'm going to level with you. I'm a cop. But I, I don't shoot anybody. I'm on traffic detail down here in the street. I I don't know from nothing about what you're doing or why, but you look like a nice kid, and I hate to see you make a bad mistake. What I'm doing is my own business. Well, sure, sure it is, but... You ought to come in and think it over. The longer you stay out there, the rougher it is. Get in here. I'm, I'm sorry, kid. The chief wants me. Ah, what do you think you're doing, Donnegan? Where's your jacket? Where'd you get that next time? Oh, I, I, I was hoping to time. Uh, I checked in late last night. William E. Cook. Seriously. Philip, here. It'll be phony, but check this name and address right away. 
Now, what were you going to say, Donegan? Well, I, I, I think I got him going, sir. Maybe if we could find out who he is, we'd find out what's eating him. Maybe he was in the army. We could get his prints on something. Or maybe there in the bathroom, we could check the files, and then we what could... What's your feet? Me? Uh, traffic A, sir. Traffic, huh? Okay, go on downstairs and see about your traffic. Yes, sir. Get away! Get away from me, or I'll jump! So Officer Donegan went back to the street to see about traffic. Well, he has plenty to see about, too. The sidewalks are jammed now. Traffic has started to stall. Thousands of New Yorkers on their way to work stand and stare at the spectacle of the young man on the ledge. Now a fire truck pulling its way up to the curb. The firemen are spreading a net, and like everyone else, they, too, are training their necks, staring up to the ledge on the 15th floor. Who are they kidding? If he jumps from that high, he'll go through that net like a bullet. Uh, give him something to aim at, anyway. Uh, he sure picked himself a good spot for him. Yeah, no way to reach him except along the ledge. Why don't you with the Come on, come on, get back. Will you, hey, will you save those horns for New Year's? What do you want to do about it? They up and can't move. It's so gag, he's threatened to jump. Then give him a ticket. That's a crime, ain't it? Knocking yourself off? He's nuts, that's all. That guy out in the ledge, he's got a... Uh, he's just a kid. Maybe he's a loopy, but he didn't look like it to me. Hey, you were up there. You seen him? You talked to him? Hey, Mark, who is he? Who is he? Come on, will you? Come on, why don't you people go to work? Now stand back there, folks. Haven't any of you got jobs? Keep moving now. Keep moving. High over their heads, up at the window, someone else is now talking to the young man. A doctor, the police psychologist. But he's making very little progress. So if you're upset about anything, son, well, I'd like to help you. I'm Dr. Strauss. Now, won't you even answer me? Where's the policeman? Policeman, which one? The one who was up here first. I don't want to talk to anyone else. Will you come back in the room if we let you talk to him? I'll have him up here right away. You know who he means? Probably that Flatfoot who botched the report and came up. Say, so what's he want to talk to him for? Does it matter as long as he talks? If I want to load these troubles on somebody, we've got a chance to get him in. Mancuso, what about the roof? Well, like I said, Chief, there's just no chance of dropping down a loop. There's no clearance. Okay, okay. Now, what was the name of that cop, the one from traffic? I'm sorry, Chief, I don't know. We'll find him. Check. He's probably working the street. Get him up here on a double. There must be 50 cops working the street, sir. Find them, Philip. Okay. You get that description on the air? Hey, 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 you hey, get that out any sir. Uh, there's a radio crew setting up across the hall. Oh, and the hotel manager wants to know who's going to pay The radio up. station. The radio station. Who else? Now, let me get to that window. Hey, fella, it's me again. You're not the one. Get away. Get away. I know I'm not the one, but we're getting him, see? So take it easy. We'll have your friend up here in a couple of minutes. Broadcasting from the 15th floor of the Hotel Rodney, and here's the description. Please listen carefully. He's about 23 years old. He's wearing gray flannel trousers and a white shirt, brown eyes and wavy brown hair. He's about 5'10 and weighs about 160 pounds. This is extremely important. If you recognize this man, call Spring 73100. And now I'm turning you over to George Button on the 15th floor of the office building, directly across the street. Come in, George. Well, the man we have just described for you, ladies and gentlemen, appears cool and detached as he stands on that narrow ledge across from where I am talking. Now and then he teeters precariously over the ledge, calmly looking down at the abyss below. The crowd is galvanized, spellbound by the breathtaking spectacle of... Well, they found Officer Dunnigan. He was just where he belonged, out on the street trying patiently to clear the traffic. they got a cordon of police now all around the hotel. Too many people are trying to get in. Take this man, for example. But I demand to get in, officer. I'm the Reverend Dr. J.C. Parkinson, the boy's pastor. Well, if you'll just wait here, Reverend, I'll... But his parents sent me here. What church do you represent? Well, I, I, I work in faith and magnetism. I saved 17 souls last month. Souls respond scientifically to slogans yeah. and prayers. Yeah, yeah, tell you what, Pop, you come back tomorrow. Huh? Right now, we're pretty busy. Hey, Farrell, get on the house phone. Will you tell us, Chief, I'm on my way up? You looking for me, Chief? Who are you, son, again? This joker's father or something? He wants you. What did you say to him before? Oh, I don't know, sir. Nothing special. Well, whatever you said, get over to that window and say it again. Okay. I'm sorry, Chief, but I don't know what you want me to do. You got to him. He loves you. He won't talk to anybody else. He doesn't like me, and he doesn't like the doctor, so you're rich. So go on, get to work. Well, look, this is, this is a little out of my line. I, I don't know anything about Loopy. Doc. Tell him. Just be natural with him. Just talk to him. Yeah, but what do I say? Doesn't matter. Anything. Anything to sublimate his drive. 
Easy, Doc. I took a little French, but I didn't keep up with it. Sorry. Uh, try to break his stride. Spoil the momentum he's building up out there. And make him talk if you can. Now, hurry. Please. Okay, okay. I'll try. Ah, it's me again. How you doing, kid? Look, down there. The traffic's all tied up. <laughs> You're telling me. My fault, huh? I, I'm holding up the parade, I guess. St. Patrick's Day Parade. Ah, don't worry about that. I feel better than I did before. Oh, that's swell. Hey, it's going to be a great parade. <laughs> you buy your shamrock yet? Are you Irish? Take a good look at my kisser, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be a heart to wear the green today. Everybody does it. You know, it makes them feel good. They get me acting. Hey, suppose I get the hotel to fix up a room on the other side, and then we can sit out like this and see the parade, huh? How about that? Oh. No, I've got to think this through. Oh, sure, sure. Just an idea, but... What was it you wanted me for, kid? Why'd you bother to send for me? Everybody else lies to me. Well, thanks. I appreciate that, kid, but but I better tell you I don't like it up here. You see, I'm I'm on a spot with the chief. I don't think he likes a flat foot muscling in. But you sent for me and I want to help you. If you're so busy, you you can go back. No, no, I didn't mean that. Hey, look, if it's a girl, kid, I can tell you all about well, there was a girl once in base. Can I have a glass of water, please? Sure. Sure thing. Anything you like, just speak up. And maybe a little ice. Not much. Just a little. Sit tight, kid. I'll be right back. Well, we want a glass of water with ice in it. Water? What for? I guess he's thirsty. I don't know. Now, look. If I can calm him into coming a little closer to the window, well, when he reaches for the glass, maybe I can make a grab for him. I yank you, and then both you'd go over. Well, not if some of the fellas here hung on to me. He yanked us all. I don't mind losing you, but I don't want a whole daisy chain of cops sailing out that window. Hey, Chief, why not put a rope on Dennigan's leg and then put some beef on the rope out in the hall? Then if he makes the grab... Okay, get a rope. And get him a glass of water. Now stall him down again while we get you rigged up. Tell him... Who let that guy in here? What do you want? I'm from the radio station, Chief. If I can get this microphone near the window, we can catch some of that conversation from the ledge, huh? Get this screwball out of here! What about those fingerprints in the bathroom? We're working on them, Chief. You playing poker in that? Turn on some I'm getting a glass of water, kid. I, I sent for some ice. You know, not much, just a little, like you said. Never mind. Well, it'll just take a second. I'll be right back. Oh, that's fine, Dunnigan. Keep talking. He's starting to relax, I think. I think he's getting a big bang out of it out there. Big shot in it out there. You see him teetering before us? Yeah, it's a little. Well set, Dunnigan. And here's the glass of water. Hey, give us a little more slack here on that rope. Tight enough, Dunnigan? Yeah, it's okay. Now, hey, only remember this, you guys. If I get a chance, I'll make a grab for him. But when I do, just be sure your hands are out of your pocket. We'll pull you back. The most you can fall is a couple of stories. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I want to put this tablet in a glass of water. What is it, Doc? Stimulant. may pick him up a little, raise his spirit. Don't worry, he won't take it. Good luck, Dunnigan. Thanks. Now, call out as far as you can, but don't let him see that rope around your leg. Okay, Chief. Go ahead, get going. They saw him from the street, Dunnigan the traffic cop, crawling out of the window and onto the ledge. And suddenly they were silent and tense, a great sea of people frozen, motionless. They were like him now, like the young man who clings taut and stiff against the side of the building. Ah. Here you are, kid. Ah. Glass of water. Thanks. You can't reach it, huh? It's okay, I'll, I'll get out a little closer to you there. Maybe if you just shut it down, here I... You're trying to grab me! You want to grab me? I won't let you! Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of 14 Hours, starring Paul Douglas as Dunnigan and Terry Moore as Virginia with Marvin Bryan as Robert. <laughs> A moment later, Officer Dunnigan and the young man are still on the leg, safe, for the time being, anyway. <laughs> I hope you don't do that again, kid. Another inch and you'd have been down there on the sidewalk. I thought you were going to grab me. And I thought we were getting to know each other a little. All I was trying to do was, well, give you this glass of water. Just, just set it down. Uh, how's this? Be careful, you might fall. Okay. The doctor put anything in the water? Oh, I don't think they do a thing like that. Hey, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll, we'll give it to Dunnigan test. I'll sample it first. Anything I can drink is all right for babies. Go ahead. Take a drink. All right. 
Well, there you are, see? Thanks. Okay. I'll go back in now. Take it easy, kid. Sit tight. Huh? What do you think you're doing? No use, Chief. He's too sharp. Go back out there and stall him. We just got a report on him. We're trying to get his family up here to see what they can do with him. Look, his name is Robert Kosick. C-O-S-I-C-K, whatever kind of a name that is. Okay. Uh, his uh, mother and father are divorced. He may not want to talk about that, but see what he can find out. Look, Doc, I... I... Okay, what'd you say his first name is? Robert. Well, keep that rope on your leg. You may get your chance yet to be a hero. Well, what about the stuff I drank in that water? Oh, forget it, Donegan. It won't hurt you. Uh. Uh, here. Hi, kid. You want another drink? No. Could I... Could I have a cigarette? Sure thing, Robert. Here, take take the pack. Put it in your left hand. Now, drop it on the left. Okay. That, that name. How did they find out? Police routine. They got a pretty good line on you, Robert. None of their business. Oh, they're just trying to help you. Everybody's trying. The cops, the firemen, the people down there in the street, the radio people, everybody. All we want for you... None of the citizens. I don't want anybody crowding me. Cigarettes. I don't smoke much, usually. I... I try to take care of myself. Good idea. Everybody ought to take good care of themselves. My father drinks too much. Yeah? Well, I got a cousin like that. Real nice fella, see? Only every time he reads... Oh, Robert. And so they talked, the policeman and the young man. And as the moments went by and the gaping crowd below stood watching, the phone in Robert's room rang once again. Got a lead on his father, Chief. I just talked to the bond house where his old man works. He's a salesman. But he's out somewhere. They can't locate him. Well, get a pickup on him. What about his mother? He lives with his sister in Jersey, but they can't reach her either. Somebody thinks she went shopping. Well, give the dope on both of them to those radio bums. It'll give them something to do. Maybe somebody will be listening. Yes, a few moments later, the appeal went out on the radio. For any information at all concerning them, please call this station or the police immediately. I'll repeat the names. The father is Paul E. Cossack. The mother is Mrs. Christine Cossack. This is urgent. Well, we're still in the office building, ladies and gentlemen, some four or five hundred feet across from the Hotel Rodney, where Robert and Officer Dunnigan are out on the lead. Dunnigan's just an average, hard-working New York cop, but he seems to be winning Robert's confidence where everyone else has failed. In back of them in the hotel room, experts of every description have been trying to... Death. And so on and so on. Well, a lot of people heard that radio appeal about Robert's parents. And now, about an hour later, the police are rushing the woman into the hotel, past the reporters, past the photographers, and up to the 15th floor. Just one thing, Chief. I'd like to talk to Mrs. Kozik before you let her see him. Why? Well, she might upset him. You never can tell. Oh, sure. Well, you psychoanalyze her, Doc. He died. Philip, tell Donegan the kid's mother's coming in. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, come in, Mrs. Kozik. Now, please, this is very important. Who are you? He's Dr. Stroud. Now, your son may be acting, Mrs. Kozik. We don't know. Or he may jump at any moment. Please let me see him. Bobby! Bobby! No, Mrs. Kozik, now, just a moment, oh, please. I knew something was wrong. I didn't even know where he was. I wasn't even sure he was in New York. It's my mother! I can hear him! They've got my mother in there! That's right, kid. They just told me. I want to talk to me. I want to see me. Oh, now, look, Robert, she's worried about you. Bobby! Bobby! Okay, let her go to the window. Get in here, Tommy. Get close. Take it easy, kid. Now, just don't get upset, huh? Bobby! Bobby, look at me. What's the matter? Look at me, son. What do you want? I haven't got much time. Oh, please, come in, please. Nothing is that bad. Oh, Bobby, please. Don't ever call me that again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but please come in. I love you, Robert. Don't do this. I know you don't want to do this to me. Robert, you love me, don't you? I haven't done anything, have I? No, you haven't done anything. Oh, then what is it? Are you in trouble, dear? Do you need money? You haven't been eating right, have you? You're upset. Am I? You've seen your father. Robert, oh, nothing is really this bad. Robert, Robert, what are you going to do? I don't know. I, I haven't made up my mind yet. Oh, I'll do anything if you just come in. It's easy, Robert. All you have to do is, is take a few steps over here to the window. No way! I said that everybody's trying to make me stupid. Mr. Donegan! Mr. Donegan! Take her away from me! Robert, Robert, don't, don't get... Kid, just stay where you are. Get in here, Mrs. Cossack. Robert! Robert, my baby! My oh. baby! Oh, 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 yes, Commissioner. <laughs> Deputy Chief Marcher, emergency sir. Well, I don't know what more we can do, sir. And that's... 
Well, yes, sir, we've tried, but we can't rig up any sort of a net without him saying it, and once he sees it, he'll jump. Yes, sir. Yes, I will. Get those firemen back here. I got to talk to them. Mrs. Carter, tell me, has Robert ever done anything like this before? No. No, he's always been nervous, but never Why won't he talk to you, Mrs. Carter? He's, he's just not himself. You think he's busted up about a girl or something? I don't know that. I haven't even heard from Robert. And Robert... Hey, Inspector Platt, can I get through, please? It's his father, his Mr. Carter. I don't know if there's anything I can do, but... Oh. Hello, Chris. Oh, Paul, oh, you're just shameless. We're doing all we can. Why did you have to come here? You think you can do anything for him? You want to talk to him? No, no, don't let him. Haven't you done enough damage? Chris, please, for the love of... Now, wait a minute. I've got enough on my hands without this. I'm trying to talk your son out of taking a dive. Now, come on, both of you. Outside in the hall. Give me a hand. We'll get down again. It'll, it'll be better out here in the hall, Mrs. Cossack. And Robert can't hear you talking. It's his fault. It is. After 15 years of neglect to come back here, if there's anybody to blame for this... Okay, it's... okay. You want to talk to him, Mr. Cossack? Well, if you think it'll do any good, but Robert's been closer to his mother. I've had the whole burden if you've been able to give him any kind of a living, any kind of a Chris, home. for heaven's sake, please shut up. Mr. Cossack, I, I've been out in the ledge with Robert most of the morning. I I know I can count him in if I can just get my hands on what's bothering him. So what is it? You're his father. What's bothering him? I, I don't know. It's been years since I really... Yes. Yes, I'd like to talk to him. Oh, this is ridiculous. I'm going back there. Now let me go. Bobby! Bobby! It's all right, dear. I won't let the doctors touch you. I won't let them do anything to you. I know what Virginia thinks, but Virginia's wrong. You're not sick. Don't listen to her, Bobby. You don't have to do anything. You shouldn't have done that, Mrs. Cossack. Now get away from the window. Ask him, Dunnigan. Ask him if he'll see his old man. Robert, your father's here too, kid. No. Oh, he wants to see you. Oh, he's afraid that maybe you got something against him. You got nothing against him, have you? Tell him to leave me alone. Who's Virginia? Will you tell me who Virginia is? I don't know. I don't know anybody by that name. How long since you saw your father, kid? They fought all the time. It was his fault. He's no good. Look, look, this is none of my business, so don't get sore. You, you, you sure you're not just taking your mother's word for that? For what? Well, about your father. Maybe you'd like him if you gave him a chance. Why don't you talk to him and give him a chance, huh? You will. Oh, that's swell. He's right here, kid. Hey, Doc. Doc, you talk to his father. He says you'll talk to him. Uh, Mr. Connor, I uh, have to stand at the window there? Well, sure you got to stand at the window. Well, I just admit I, I can't stand looking down very well. He's here, kid, but you, you don't have to talk to him any longer than you want to. Anytime you feel like you want to stop, just yell like before, okay? Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Go ahead, Mr. Connor. Robert, I want to help you if I can. I... I'm not going to ask you to tell me why you're doing this if, if you don't want to tell me. I, I know it's difficult. It's, it's, it's been difficult for me, too. Why did it turn out like this, Robert? What happened? I tried to tell you, Chief, the kid's mother. She hit him with somebody named Virginia. He turned white as a duck. I said, who's Virginia? And he clammed up. I figured there's a girl mixed in it somewhere. See what you can get out of a mother. Well... Well, where did she go? The reporters, Chief. They got her in that room down the hall. Well, get her back here. Oh, what's the rush, Donnegan? Maybe the old man's getting to him. Get back to the window. See what he's saying. I know I've made a lot of mistakes, Robert. But I love your mother. I don't know really what happened. You know what I'm trying to tell you, son? No. I never understood you. You're afraid to look down there. Aren't you, Father? Thousands of people in cars. Thousands of people. They're all looking at us. Robert, are you trying to punish? Punish? Your being here, tell me. Is it some way to try to make me feel that all these years I was just... Far below them, down on the street, the tension has eased a little. It's become a sort of, sort of a holiday. Some of the cab drivers are making up a pool. There'll be quite a prize going to the driver who'll guess the hour closest to that moment when Robert jumps. The concessionaires are there, too. Hot dogs, balloons, ice cream. But now in the room on the 15th floor, Dr. Strauss is reporting back to the deputy chief of police. Well, what about Mrs. Karsik? He's still talking to the reporters. Say, what goes with her anyway? Yeah, she's a case herself, just like the boy. She keeps telling them how much she gave up for her baby. 
Seems she used to be a musician. Might have been a concert pianist if she hadn't devoted her life to her son. Well, what's that supposed to prove? Hard to say. Guilt complex, I suppose, somewhere along the line. Chief, Chief, please let me talk to her. There's one thing you can do, Dunnigan. Get down there and clear out those reporters. Then can I talk to her? But there's nothing much I can do here as long as the father's talking to him. Doc, go ahead, Dunnigan. Second room across the hall. What do you want? Why did you send the reporters away? I want the doctor. I'm under the care of that doctor. You've just been transferred to me, lady. You're under my care now, and I want to know about the girl. Now, who is she, that Virginia? Is she Robert's girl or something? Oh, please. Please let me alone. I'm his mother. Don't you think I can feel anything? I don't think you can feel anything but sorry for yourself. <gasps> Look, I've been out there all day now, hanging from that window by the seat of my pants. I don't know what's wrong with your boy. I don't know why I care, but I do. I'm going to do everything I can to get him off that ledge. You're just a policeman. The doctor said that... You're interrupting me. Now, if there's any chance that Robert has a girl that might help him to get back in, I'm going to find out about her, even if I have to get a little rough with you. I'm not kidding. I want to know. Now, why did Virginia leave him? Why? Give me another chance, Robert. I'm your father. I was wrong to leave you and Mother. I... I didn't want to hurt you, but I, I just couldn't stand the bickering, the constant coughing and complaining. What right have you got to say that? Got so I couldn't go home. I hated the sight of her, the sound of her voice. No. No, I, I didn't mean to say that. If you ever say that again, if you ever so much as touch my mother, I'll kill you! I'm sorry, Robert. Really, I'm sorry. Ten minutes more. Twenty. Thirty. Robert's alone now. He just stands on the ledge and looks down at the crowd. What does he see down there? Not much, really. He's too far away to see the faces, just a vast, nameless array of humanity patiently waiting for him to make up his mind. And among the sea of people is the evangelist. Remember him? The one who talked about faith and magnetism. He still wants to see Robert, and he won't give up. He's in the hotel now. Down in the basement, he told the guard he was from the water company. Somehow he's going to get upstairs. What way he see? Well, what about it, Don? Again, you get anything out of his mother? The girl's name is Virginia Forrest. They got engaged, only now it's busted up. I couldn't tell whether... Where is she now, this Virginia? Well, she lives with her folks in Connecticut, Stanford. Well, it'll take a couple of hours to get her down there, even if we find her. Well, what's the difference? Okay, we'll give it a whirl. You hear that, man, Cuso? Put a pickup on her. Yes, sir. Virginia Forrest, Stanford, Connecticut. Now, get back to the window, Don, again, and keep your boyfriend busy. We're going to drop a man in a rig from the roof and try to grab him. A rig? But if the kid sees anything like that, he'll die. You tell that to the commissioner. He just had me on the phone again. Now it's in order. Sorry, sir. Doc, Doc, how is he? Oh, he's getting pretty confused. I'm glad you're back. You know what they're going to do? That, that rig routine from the roof. They're crazy. Keep the boys from looking up. That's all you can do. Uh, Hi, kid. It's me again. Done again. I got you some more cigarettes. No. No, thanks. Hey, that uh, looked like a pretty good thing you had with Virginia, huh? Why'd you throw her over? She's probably worried sick about you. Wasn't any good. Wasn't any good. Why not? It just wasn't. Why did they ever have to find out about her? I didn't want her to know anything about it. So Donegan keeps talking to him, holding the boy's attention. And as the minutes go by, a man is being lowered from the roof, a man in a chair, a sort of breeches buoy. Orders from the commissioner. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe the man will get to him. Get to Robert before the boy even knows he's there and pin oh, him against the side of the building. Look out, Robert! Look out, Robert! Look out! Here they come! Look out! They're yelling at him, yelling at Robert. People from the office buildings across the street. The windows are full of them. They're warning Robert. For some crazy reason, they don't want him to be fooled. And finally, Robert hears and looks up. Get away from me! Get away from me! Oh, get that man out and put him on Robert. No, no, don't jerk him. I'm thinking, Tom. They knew they were going to do that. You were in on it. Shut him. Who do you think you're yelling at? He's gone, isn't he? They're pulling him up, aren't they? You open your trap to me like that just once more, and I'll come over there and push you off myself. Robert, Robert, be quiet. You realize he was risking his neck for you? You realize half the police force in New York is climbing around this hotel, holding their breath to see what you're going to do? I'm going to jump. I'm not going to jump. Don't let anybody touch me. Give me a glass of water. Okay, kid, they're going to jump. Go ahead. Jump, jump. I trusted you. Well, I got a belly full of you. A belly full of you is what I got. I don't know why I bothered with you in the first place. So go ahead. We 
We'll continue with the third act of 14 hours in a few moments. The curtain rises on Act Three of Fourteen Hours, starring Paul Douglas as Dunnigan and Terry Moore as Virginia, with Marvin Bryan as Robert. <laughs> Robert didn't jump. He's still there. And up on the roof, commissioner or no commissioner, the police and the firemen are hauling back the rope, the breeches boy and the man they lowered to the 15th floor. Mr. Donegan. I got nothing more to say to you. I appreciate what you've been trying to do. I, I'm all mixed up. I, I'm sorry. So you're sorry. Look, but don't you see your mother gave you a wrong steer about your father? Don't you see he's really a good Joe and he, well, he likes you. I, I guess so. I I just don't know what to do. Your father's still here. Why don't you tell him you were wrong? Why don't you? Okay. Mr. Cossack. It's all right, Robert. I understand. I guess we both understand each other a little better now. Yes. It doesn't matter so much anyway. Listen to me, Robert. Why don't you come on in for a little while? I'll make a deal with you. Now, you've been out there a long time. You're tired. You haven't had anything to eat. And I'll make a deal with you. Save your breath. You haven't even heard it yet. Uh, if you want to come in and, and take a shower and think things over, I'll clear everybody out of the room. I'll give you the key and you can lock yourself in. And then if you want to go back out there on the ledge again, why, okay, that'll be your own decision. How do I know you're doing it? How do I know? Because you got my word for it. You didn't tell me before when they tried to grab me. No, I didn't, but I think that's a little different, don't you, kid? Anyway, I couldn't have stopped them if I don't wanted to. But this is it's just between us. If I say so, you've got my word for it. All right. I believe you. Now, stay where you are. Don't come near the window till I give you the sign. I'll need a couple of minutes to clear the room. Now stay there. <laughs> come on, everybody. Everybody out. Out. All you jumpers there. Clear the room. Out. Out. Now, maybe you got something here, Donegan. Look, you other guys. Doc. Oh, thank you. So talk it up. You know, make some noise. Come on. I want a man in the closet, a man in the bathroom, and I, I'll, I'll get behind the chair. Donegan, yeah. you hug the wall. He won't see you till he gets in. Then slam that window. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, now. Now, who's got the key? I promised I'd give him the key and I hand it over. I hope you know what you're doing, Donegan. Everybody out in the hall. I mean everybody. I'll, I'll leave the key here, Robert, here on the ledge in front of the window. Now, just give me a couple of seconds to get out, and I'll guard the door and see that nobody busts in until you get it locked, okay? Okay. Count to ten, kid. Count to ten, and then come in. The room is quiet now. The police are hiding. Robert stands on the ledge counting. Seven, eight, nine, ten. He makes his way to the window, crouches and looks in. He sees no one. And then suddenly the door leading to the adjoining room is flung open. Kneel and pray, my boy. Kneel and pray. The evangelist. Kneel and pray and be washed in the blood of... Come back, Robert. Come back. <laughs> But Robert is gone again, back on the ledge, trembling and white, his eyes shut, his arms flung wide against the walls of the building. And he stands there gasping. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm sorry. I did. It was a, a mistake. I don't even know where he came from. Why wasn't somebody watching that door? We almost had him. He'll never believe me now, no matter what I say to him. I'll pray for him. I'll kneel and pray for him. Not in here, you won't. Get rid of his character. again. Yeah. You got any other ideas? Well, the girl. You got anything on the girl? Ah, nothing, no. I'm going down to get a cup of coffee. You want to stay here? Whatever you say. You stay. Can I use your phone? Yeah, go ahead. Clear a line for Dunnigan. I'll be back in ten minutes. Okay, on the phone, Dunnigan. Thanks. Hello? Well, give me Bayside 99970. Yeah, thanks. Hey, where are the others? The doc, the kid's parents. Uh, down the hall. Reporters again. You want anything? No, no. Hello? Oh, Helen? I'm going to be a little late tonight. Yeah. 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 Are the kids there? Harry okay? I don't know. I still have to check in. Down again! Hang on, Helen. Yes, sir? They found the girl, Virginia. They're flying her down. Stick her on. Yes, sir. Helen, Helen, I'll... Well, I'll explain when I see you. No, no. No, it's okay. Now, go ahead. Will you start without me? Yeah, save me a piece of liver. Goodbye. 
Quiet her down, huh? Well, maybe she's all we need. I don't know from nothing anymore. Hey, look. It's starting to get dark outside. Yes. Yeah. I better stick my head out there. See if you're talking. Kid. Kid. Are you all right? Are you all right? Yes, it's getting dark now. The lights are starting to come on. There's one right across the way in the office building where the radio announcer is filled with his microphone. And the darkness is transforming this entire scene into, well, it's a strange, fantastic sight. The police have brought in searchlights now. They're training them on the building. Robert Cossack stands there transfixed by the sudden glare. He's waving his arms. He's... Oh, wait a minute. The searchlights are being turned off, and very wisely, I should say. There's no telling how that intense light might affect them, and they're taking no chances. There's been a rumor that the police have found a girl, some girl who may... She's just getting out of the elevator, Dunnigan. Mark's are watching 1507, just you and the doc. He wants you to talk to the girl. Hey, doc, Mark's are watching 1507. It's better if we talk alone, Virginia, just you and I and Officer Dunnigan here. Thank you. Robert, he's still out there. Still out on the ledge? Oh, that's right, miss. And if it's okay with you, let's get right to the point. You were engaged to Robert, huh? Why'd you break it off? I didn't. He did. He did? Why? Well, he, he just said that he couldn't... That, that he'd make me unhappy. That it would be... Did you have a fight? No. Nobody'd get mad. What about Virginia? Whenever I tried to help him... Oh, he'd, he'd get in an argument and lose his job and get sick. Really sick. I, I tried to get him to see a doctor, but... And he'd get angry about that? Yes, all I had to do was mention it. We want you to talk to Robert, but first we want to be sure you understand. Oh, I couldn't talk to him. I couldn't. Well, don't you want to help him, Virginia? Oh, yes, yes, I do, but I, well, I can't. We were hoping that, well, that maybe you could make him see that he, well, that he was important to you. But what can I say? Well, we've put some of the pieces together, Virginia. Part of it's only guesswork, but it's an old, old pattern. It's been going on as long as they've been families. What's been going on, Doctor? I don't understand. Well, briefly, crudely, it's something like this. Robert's mother didn't want it, not really. He spoiled her beautiful dream of a great career. But she didn't blame Robert. No, on the other hand, she babied him all his life. Said she blamed everything on her husband. And probably, without even knowing it, she taught Robert to hate his father. Well, in recent years, Robert realized it was wrong, so he took on an added hate himself. Robert hated himself? And everything that happened proved he was right. He's convinced himself he's of no use to anyone. Virginia, do you love him? Yes, yes, I do. I've always loved him. Well, then tell him so. Please, make him believe it. You know, once we get him off that ledge, we'll do everything possible to straighten him out. You see, he, he wants to love you, Virginia, but he feels unworthy. He's afraid Doctor, to. Uh, Doc, please, can we try it now? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Go know. ahead, Duncan. Take her. They're taking Virginia now to room 1505, and downstairs in the lobby, the police and the firemen have still another idea. They'll bring a net up on the elevator to the 13th floor. They'll turn out as many lights as they can. And in the darkness, Robert won't see them stringing the net beneath him. Well, it's an idea. Maybe this is the one that will work. He'll be occupied anyway, talking to Virginia. In the distance, the clock in Times Square says 9 o'clock in 12 hours. 12 hours and 10 minutes. Robert. Robert, it's Virginia. Virginia. But I told him. I told them this doesn't have anything to do with you. Why did they have to drag you into this? But, Robert, I love you. I need you, and I want you. That's all I... I won't ask you to do anything you don't want to do. They're doing something down there. They're taking something out of the window down there. What does it matter what they're doing? Don't you love me, Robert? I thought you loved me. Oh, Robert, I kept the poem you wrote me in your last letter when you went away. I didn't quite understand it, but, but it was beautiful. I, I know it by heart. I do. You were gone, Virginia, and I remember the empty doorway, the soft, dark shadows that said goodnight, the, the heavy anguish on my shoulders. I look at the awkward hand that cannot touch your beauty. I hear the silent footsteps that's ending in the silent street. Forgive me, Virginia. I am empty. Why don't you finish it? Go on, Virginia. Finish it. No. Oh, no, Robert. I didn't mean I I don't... tasted the wind. I have tasted the earth. There's nothing in between. Nothing but empty anger below. No goal but the restless lantern of the dead. In the darkness, they're stretching the net out of the 13th floor windows, but it's taking too much time, more time than they thought. 
And Deputy Chief Marcher has gone upstairs to Donegan. We need maybe 10 or 15 minutes more to get the net up and then bingo. Let him jump and we got him. The point is, can you keep him busy that long? Yeah. You okay? I'm okay. Uh, w- what happened to the girlfriend? Well, she did all she could. She's inside now with his folks. 7, 15, oh, 7, you know. Maybe the doc better give you something. I'm okay. Well, it's all yours, son, again. Yeah. Uh, it's me, kid. What's the trouble? Why can't you tell me? What is it? I, I don't know. Well, Virginia said you were acting kind of funny. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I, I couldn't breathe if I came. Well, I, I think I know how you feel about it. You're, you're mixed up about Virginia, I guess. It's gone. No, no, of course not. You want to see her again? No, no. Okay, okay. Maybe you want to marry her, only you don't want to, you can't, or you think you should. You know, that's a tough one. It could happen to anybody. By the way, you know how many girls call up this hotel here today and say they'd marry you? How many? Well, a lot. About ten, I think they told me. That's crazy. Uh, I'd really like to come in, Mr. Dunnigan, but I can't. Why not? Uh, I just can't now. Not after this. I might, though, if you could give me a good reason to. But but you can't. Life is rotten, and you know it. It's just a rat race. Sure, sure, sure. But there's a lot in it that's okay. Like what? Well, I... I'm not so sure that I can explain it. I never counted it all up, I guess. A rat race. Anybody that puts up with it is, is just dumb. What are they doing down there? They've got ropes again. I can see them. What's happening? Oh, they're just pulling around. Kid, you know how cops are. they got to do something. Don't worry about they're them. They're waiting for me to jump. Everybody's waiting for me to jump. Could be. <laughs> but I'll make you a bet. You come in this room and you'll hear a cheer go up like when DiMaggio belts one into the stands. If they weren't waiting for me to jump, they'd go home. Yeah, yeah, sure. A lot of jerks will look at anything. I don't know. Maybe I agree with you. A rat race, like you said. Man washing a window, making cigars. Everybody wants to see what's going to happen. But jumping off buildings doesn't buy any potatoes. You don't get anything out of this racket you don't put into it. What about you? You happy? Me? You want to hear about me? Okay. Well, some days I get real tired, like now. My back's been troubling me a little lately, but I forget about it when I get out of the suit and get a couple of beers in me. That's one thing it's okay, a beer now and then. I get a kick out of that first swallow when I'm dry. I... I could never understand how anybody could drink beer. My wife used to feel the same way as you do. I showed her something. No? Put a little salt in it. She drinks it all the time now. Is she nice? Is she pretty? No, she's... Well, she's not a Park Avenue photographer's model. No, I... No, I don't suppose you'd say she's pretty. She ought to have had her teeth fixed when she was a kid, but they didn't do much about that in those days. And yeah, She's taken on a little around the hips since the two kids, but that's to be expected. That's natural. We have a lot of laughs. Maybe, well, maybe I could explain better how I feel if I'd read more books or gone to church more. Helen's more for that, but that's natural. It's going to be Easter soon, too, you know. I kind of like Easter. The family, we we sort of make a thing of it. Last Easter, though, I was down on the avenue jockeying a top hat. Maybe we'll get to go this year. Hey, why don't you come out this Sunday and meet the wife? We'll eat. Oh, she's a good cook. And then we can go over to Sheep's Head and fish for floppers off the pier. Floppers? What are floppers? Flounders, kid. You know, flat, white on one side. You know, how about it? How about coming out? No. Why not? I can't tell you. But why can't you tell me? I can't tell you. You're you're trying to trick me again. You mean you wouldn't like to go fishing with me? I didn't say that. Well, we could have a swell time, honest. This Sunday? Sure. Sure, this Sunday, any Sunday. You pick it. And then as they talked through the darkness, a blinding flash struck the building. Down the street, some boys, just kids, had turned on the searchlight. Robert spun around like a bullet had hit him. For a split second, he stood there nailed by the glaring light. And then his foot missed the ledge and he fell. And the voice of the crowd was like something never heard before. Donegan? Yes. Me, Donegan Moxer. I... We got him. We got him in the net on the level, Donegan. 
Go ahead, Doc. Tell him. He's all right. He's suffering from shock, but he's all right. Doctor. Oh, come in, Virginia. Well, it, I mean later, will it just happen again? We'll all have to help him, Virginia. But he wants to live, so the worst is over. Right now, he needs rest. Mr. Dunnigan, but... I can't... <laughs> it's okay. You, you just do what the doc tells you. Thank you. I'm going to get a drink, Dunnigan. You come with me. Oh, thanks, but I, I better get on home, if it's okay with you. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go on. Things on the street are quickly returning to normal now. People come and go without policemen stopping them. Maybe some good has come out of all this. Maybe they've learned something. Kindness, maybe. To be a little kinder to each other. I don't know. Officer Dunnigan is walking across the lobby now. And a little girl runs up to him and he picks her up. His daughter. She tells him that her mother and brother are just outside. But they've come for it. Oh, so you heard it on the radio, huh? Well, here you are. Come on, honey. Let's find your mummy and go home. In a moment, our stars will return. And here they are for a well-deserved curtain call. Paul Douglas and Terry Moore. How about your play for next week, Irving? Next week's play is in a class all its own. It's a beautiful tale of faith and a miracle. A story that reminds us that indeed there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophy. It's the miracle of Fatima. And as our stars of this inspiring Warner Brothers picture, we will have that remarkable young actress, Susan Whitney, in her original role, and that brilliant character actor, Jay Carroll Nash. That's uh, a wonderful picture. Irving, it's been nice to be here. Good night. Good night. Good night. is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.